How many times have you heard, eat your damn fruit and vegetables? <laughs> However, it turns out that plants have different compounds and substances that have a negative effect on your body in large amounts. Recently, there's been a lot of talk about these things called oxalates. So, in this video, I'm gonna tell you what are oxalates and whether or not oxalates are bad for you. <laughs> so, what are these? strange things called oxalates. Oxalate or oxalic acid is an organic acid that's found in certain plants such as leafy green vegetables, spinach, some fruit, nuts and seeds. Oxalate gets synthesized by the incomplete oxidation of carbohydrates. When you consume oxalates you may get an adverse reaction because oxalates bind together with calcium, iron and other minerals. Too many oxalates prevent calcium from being absorbed in the body and can decrease bone density. Combining oxalates with eating fiber can also hinder absorption of minerals. Some people think that oxalates contribute to autism, but there are no studies that link these connections. Oxalates get formed as a byproduct of normal metabolism already, but consumption of too many oxalates may cause kidney stone formation and digestive issues. About 80% of kidney stones are made of calcium oxalates. Kidney stones! Like I said, oxalates get created by metabolism all the time, and your red blood cells can also synthesize oxalates. But certain foods are higher in oxalates than others. Spinach, Swiss chard, kale, turnip greens, endive, and star fruit. Rhubarb, the root and leaves of rhubarb are high in oxalates. The leaves are higher in oxalates than the root, but... I don't know any people who would actually eat the leaves. Beetroot, including beet greens. Certain grains like buckwheat, okra, amaranth, legumes and beans. Cocoa powder, surprisingly peanuts and sweet potatoes. Some herbs and spices like black pepper, parsley, cinnamon, turmeric. Metabolizing vitamin C can also create oxidates. Thus, foods high in vitamin C can contribute to this as well. Amino acids like hydroxyproline can also be converted into oxidates. So even animal foods can contribute to your body's oxalate load. Kidney stones! Oxalates, they're like the new gluten that you have to eliminate them completely from a diet because they're so dangerous for you. Evil! And don't eat another piece of spinach ever again. <coughs> However, oxalates themselves aren't necessarily bad. They become harmful in large amounts if you consume too many of them. And like I also said, metabolizing food, whether from plants or animals, they all create some oxalates in some degree. And also some of the foods that are high in oxalates like beetroot and turmeric, they're still incredibly healthy for you. Cacao is incredibly good for your mitochondria and is one of the highest sources of magnesium. Therefore, what matters is how many oxalates you get exposed to. Before starting to restrict your oxalates, you should know if your urine has too high levels of oxalates in the first place. If you have kidney stones or suffer from mineral deficiencies, then you should minimize the consumption of oxalates at least for the majority of time. If you have too high levels of uric acid in your urine, then you should also consider restricting your oxalate intake. However, eating too much protein can also raise your uric acid levels. Plant-based diets tend to be higher in oxalates because of the increased intake of vegetables, which is why vegetarians are more likely to suffer from calcium deficiencies. Diets consistently low in calcium and other fat-soluble vitamins aren't healthy in the long term, and a high intake of oxalates all the time isn't recommended either. Magnesium deficiencies make you more susceptible to kidney stone formation through oxalate overloading. Sulfur deficiencies can also hinder your body's ability to process oxalates and inhibit detox pathways. So most people, they don't need to avoid all oxalates. You just have to know whether or not you're getting too much exposure and whether or not you need to balance them in some way. Eat your vegetables. Eating a little bit more calcium rich foods like cheese, dairy, fish and broccoli can actually reduce the oxalate load in your body by making calcium bind together with oxalates in the gut. Cooking and soaking certain foods before eating will lower the amount of oxalates in them and thus making them easier to digest. You shouldn't overcook your food because that's gonna damage the nutrients but slightly heating your vegetables can lower the oxalate load by about 10 to 20%. You wanna eat your vegetables. 
We will sit down here all night. Another critical thing to remember is that how well your body can process oxalates and how you're gonna react to all types of different foods depends on the state of your gut and microbiome. Certain bacteria like the Oxalobacter formigenes can reduce the amount of oxalates your body absorbs by using it for energy and thus reducing the risk of kidney stones. The problem is that antibiotics and general inflammation in the gut has been shown to lower the amount of this antioxidant bacterial colonies in the gut. Chronic diarrhea can also make you flush out these oxalobacter formigenes. Foods that can support the growth of these beneficial antioxidant bacteria are fermented foods, sauerkraut, raw kefir, and animal fats like butter and meat. I would also imagine that these bone broths and gelatinous meats tendons, they all benefit this and they're gonna heal the gut. People who've had gastric bypass surgery also show higher levels of oxalates in their urine, which gets traced back to their gut health. Therefore, it's not the oxalates, it's your gut health. If your gut is healthy, then you should be able to metabolize all these things like gluten, lectins, phytanes and oxalates very easily with no problems. However, most people's guts are so messed up because of chronic inflammation, too much stress, environmental toxins, inflammatory foods, circadian mismatches, poor lifestyle habits and who knows what else, antibiotics. And they need to heal their gut first before they can be healthy again. I'm gonna eat twice as many vegetables tomorrow night. So, in conclusion, if you don't have kidney stones or some sort of autoimmune disorders, then you shouldn't be afraid of consuming oxalates in moderate amounts. People with some sort of inflammatory conditions may benefit from eliminating the oxalates from the diet for a short period of time, but in the long term, they should still focus on healing the gut and reducing the inflammation. And I think that that should be the end goal with this as well. You don't want to be afraid of any kind of food and you wanna be able to successfully metabolize all types of different foods. I can eat many things. Of course, you don't have to eat them all the time, but you shouldn't get sick from them because if you don't heal the gut, then you will always be afraid of or whether or not I accidentally breathe in some gluten or some micro oxalates. But yeah, that's it for this video. Leave a comment down below whether or not you've had any issues with kidney stones or oxalates. And click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay anti-fragile. Stay empowered. I am feeling no discomfort.